This video is based on the work of two research teams. One led by Dr. Owen Standen at the Wellcome Laboratories of Tropical Medicine in the early 50s, and the other led by Dr. Diane McLaren in the late 80s at the National Institute for Medical Research. Dr. McLaren's scanning and transmission electron micrographs of the schistosome are featured in our video. This is the image seen in the microscope, which is enlarged still further when processed photographically. It should be appreciated that these electron micrographs represent a wide range of magnifications. For example, this adult male schistosome is magnified about 35 times when viewed on a 50 centimeter television screen. His ventral sucker, 500 times, and this spiny inside edge of the sucker, 7,000 times. Some of our images are magnified around a quarter of a million times, like this section showing the outer surface of a larval schistosome. It was with the aid of this electron microscope that Dr. McLaren was able to unravel one of the most puzzling stages in the life cycle of the schistosome. The crucial process is involved in the transformation from free living organism to a parasitic way of life. These happy children are playing in water that is more than likely to be infected by one of the world's most damaging parasitic diseases. Schistosomes are parasitic flukes that live in the bloodstream of man. They cause the disease schistosomiasis, probably better known as bilharzia, a major health problem for hundreds of millions of people in many tropical and subtropical regions of the world. A male schistosome is seen here with a female partly held in his gynecophoric canal. The male is about a centimeter long and uses the lateral folds of his body to form the gynecophoric canal with which he embraces the longer, more slender female. Incidentally, the scientific name schistosoma means cleft-bodied. This is the anterior part of the cleft which surrounds the head end of the female. Here are the paired schistosomes in the portal vein of an experimentally infected hamster. The flukes migrate as far as they can into the mesenteric veins and the female extends out of the gynecophoric canal to deposit her eggs into the smaller blood vessels. The eggs then work through the tissues into the lumen of the intestine. In this species of schistosome, the eggs pass out later with the feces. Here's an egg in a fecal smear. The earliest records of urinary schistosomiasis are to be found in the Ebers papyrus, dated around 1900 BC. Although the ancient Egyptians did not know the cause of the disease, they recognized and clearly illustrated the urinary symptoms in their hieroglyphics. Calcified schistosome eggs have also been identified in the kidneys of mummies more than 3,000 years old. It was not until 1851 that the German pathologist Theodor Bilharz identified Schistosoma hematobium as the causative agent of urinary schistosomiasis in Egypt. In 1904, Katsurada described the life cycle of Japonicum. And in 1907, Sambon described Mansoni as a separate species. In 1934, Fischer recorded the existence of intercalatum. And as recently as 1978, Vogue, Bruckner and Bruce discovered Mekongai. Today, 18 species are recognized. Of these, Mansoni, Japonicum and Hematobium probably infect more people worldwide than any of the other species. Mansoni lives chiefly in the veins of the large intestine, and this part of the portal circulation is also infected by Japonicum. The passage of eggs through the intestinal tissues causes ulceration, thickening and fibrosis of the bowel wall. Eggs can be seen in this much thickened region of the superficial layers of the intestine. Also at the bases of the villi. Those eggs which enter the lumen of the gut are discharged with the faeces. Schistosoma hematobium differs from the other two species. It inhabits the blood vessels of the bladder 
and its eggs are discharged with the urine. The main clinical sign is hematuria, but ultimately fibrotic lesions may develop throughout the whole of the urogenital system. Bladder cancer is not an uncommon development in advanced stages of the disease. Schistosomiasis is currently endemic in 75 countries. Hematobium is present in 53 countries, mostly in Africa, but also in the eastern Mediterranean. Mansoni shows a similar distribution, except that it's also found in South America, notably Brazil, where it was probably carried with the slave trade. Japonicum, on the other hand, is confined to countries of the Far East, China, Indonesia, and the Philippines. Japan, where the parasite was originally found, has now been freed from the disease. Mekongai occurs in Southeast Asia. And intercalatum is found in Central and West Africa. Worldwide, some 200 million people are infected with the schistosomes and 500 to 600 million are at risk. The highest infection rates are found in Brazil, Egypt and the Sudan. Freshwater snails play an essential role in the transmission of the disease, since each schistosome will spend part of its life cycle in the tissues of a snail. Species of Bulinus are intermediate hosts for hematobium. Biomphalaria carries mansoni, and Oncomelania carries japonicum. Wholesale destruction of the snail hosts with chemical molluscicides is one obvious method of reducing the incidence of schistosomiasis. But since the snails are hermaphrodite, possessing both male and female sexual organs, it needs only one individual to survive a control program of this kind for an entire area to be repopulated within a single season. Moreover, development projects such as hydroelectric schemes like the gigantic Kariba Dam on the Zambezi have created large bodies of water and consequently enabled the snails to flourish in recent years. Although most infected people carry only small numbers of schistosomes, treatment with an effective drug not only reduces the prevalence of the disease, it also reduces morbidity. Praziquantel is currently the drug of choice since a single dose affects all the main species of schistosome that infect man and it produces high cure rates. Oxamnequin is also used for mansoni, especially in South America, while metrifonate is valuable for the treatment of hematobium. It's man's primitive habits with regard to urination and defecation which maintain the disease in the community. Obviously, the separation of urine and feces from waters inhabited by the snails is vital in the control of infection. In the third world, this is easier said than done. However, in Zimbabwe, the Blair Research Laboratories have produced some interesting designs for simple water pumps and lavatories. This one is a strong shelter built over a deep pit. It has an odour pipe, fly traps, and is easy to keep clean. And here are some variations on the basic design. <laughs> 